Welcome back to Squawk Box this morning. Investors will be paying extra close attention to this week's Federal Reserve meeting in a new op-ed this morning. Our next guest says the event has turned from a snooze fest into a test of the Fed's control over the narrative that the current bout of inflation is only transitory. Joining us right now is Ali Anson, Gramercy advisor, Mohammed Alarian. He also is president of Queens College, Cambridge. Good morning to you, Mohammed. Let's talk about this Fed meeting, but let's also talk about what I think is the second to last paragraph uh, in that op-ed, which is the implications of the Fed on the Biden administration and the policy and infrastructure policy and everything else that we're going to see or not see as a result. Thanks for having me, Andrew. So think about the economy has gone from going uphill to going downhill. It is gathering momentum. The recovery is gaining. And now you have a situation where both monetary and fiscal policy are pedal to the metal. So you're accelerating into something going downhill, which means that there is risk of overheating everywhere. Now, if you continue with this policy mix, there is a risk that the fiscal, which involves major reforms, gets crowded out by the monetary that's no longer having the impact it used to have. So the right thing to do right now is to recalibrate that policy mix. If you don't, the Biden reforms may be sacrificed. OK, but then the question is, Mohammed. OK, so, so you're Jay Powell. You're not you're supposed to be acting independently. And this goes to the whole idea. You're supposed to be acting independently of the administration or of Congress. Do you say I'm going to put the brakes on over here because I think that these folks over here are going to actually press on the accelerator? Or do you have to wait for them to press on the accelerator over here, if you will, on, on infrastructure or whatnot? And then I'll put the brakes on. So they all say we have to wait till they press on the accelerator and then we'll put we won't put the brakes. No one's talking about putting the brakes on. In fact, you want to avoid a slamming of the brakes. What we're talking about is easing your foot a little bit of the monetary stimulus accelerator. But they are now in a trap. They're in a trap because of three things. They've repeated over and over again with enormous conviction, inflation is transitory. Secondly, they've repeated over and over again, they're not thinking about thinking about tapering. And thirdly, they've got a backward looking new monetary framework, which made tremendous sense when there was a problem of aggregate demand but doesn't make sense when there's right. today a problem aggregate supply. So it is very difficult for them to exit from a paradigm that they've created themselves. That's why the marketplace is very comfortable that despite everything we're seeing every single day, the Fed is going to remain pedal to the metal. Right. Mohammed, two very quick questions. Uh, news in the headlines. One, this Novavax news. Is it already priced in the market? Because it's great news. But you would have thought the market would have moved on it already, and it doesn't appear to be moving. No, because I think we've, we've embraced this notion that vaccines are effective, and that just confirms it, and it's wonderful, wonderful news. I think keep an eye on what's happening here in the UK, this new variant, and the fact that the, that the Johnson government feels that they cannot go forward with reopening because of this new Delta variant. That's something to keep an eye on. And then just... Give us your 30-second take on Elon Musk and Bitcoin. One man yeah, can, I mean, can move the price the of Bitcoin more than 10 percent. Yeah, of course, because it's is it? suddenly adoption. Suddenly adoption is favored again. So remember, it's a tug of war between adoption and regulation. And, and, and Elon Musk has a huge influence on the adoption side of that equation. But did he say something you think that was fundamentally different than what you had heard before? Yeah, because people doubted him when, you know, first he said that, that Tesla would accept it as a form of payment, which implies a currency. Then he said, I'm not sure if we will. And now he's saying, yes, we will. So, yes, I mean, he, he is influencing this whole notion that it is a currency and it will be adopted by the private sector. Right. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.